welcome to Pikeville History Moments, where we talk about the history and heritage of Pikeville, Kentucky, and the surrounding area. A few months ago, Governor Paul Patton agreed to sit down for what was supposed to be a five-minute interview with Pike TV. We're happy to have the opportunity to share some of that with you. We'd also like to note that the chapter on Governor Patton that was written by Sarah George and included in David Deskin's history on Pike County called Ginseng, Coal Dust, Moving Mountains is a wonderful resource that goes into much greater detail about his career. As you probably know, Governor Patton was a successful coal operator, university president, and is still the chancellor of the University of Pikeville. Today, we're going to focus on his time in public service during the years between those two phases of his career. First, let's go back to the beginning. Well, as I was raised in Lawrence County, we're about 75 miles north of Pikeville and on 23, and uh, went to the University of Kentucky and married a girl from Floyd County. And so we came back out of college to Floyd County, and then her father helped us start a business at Virgie up on Long Fork. Uh, in about 1961, I guess. And uh, we moved to Pikeville, I'd say, in 61. And so I'm almost where I could be called a native now. It may seem odd for a coal operator to enter politics, but Patton had a long-held interest in public service. His parents were politically active in Lawrence County, and his father, Ward, once ran for state legislature, reportedly losing by 17 votes. In 1977, he married the future First Lady of Kentucky, Judy Conway. She was already active in local politics and in nonprofit work. Miss Patton is also the daughter of the late Roy and Esther Conway, both of whom had served as sheriff of Pike County. Roy was killed in the line of duty and Esther served in the office following his death. Patton had been politically active in the 1970s, but after he sold his mining operations in 1978, the political world came calling. We sold the company and I didn't have much to do. And Carol Hubbard, a congressman from West Kentucky, got an idea that if I would spend a million dollars and run for governor in 79, that I could win. Well, I sort of messed with that for two or three days and made some statewide news and my friends told me, well, you can't win, but if you did win, you're not qualified. He accepted an appointment as Deputy Transportation Secretary under Governor John Y. Brown, but resigned in protest about three months after taking office. The Brown administration backed off a promise to send coal severance dollars back to the coal producing counties. He came back to Pike County on the same day. Oddly, the Brown administration spent two weeks claiming Patton had not resigned and had instead left temporarily. Uh, some of my friends said, now, if you want to be governor, why don't you come back here in Pike County and run for county judge and learn politics and build a political base and uh, uh, then maybe you could be governor. Now, I think they really just wanted to beat Wayne Rutherford, who was the county judge. I don't think they had any idea that I'd ever be governor. And, and of course, I knew it was a long shot. Mr. Rutherford, who passed recently, was one of the most successful political figures in Pike County history. He served six non-consecutive terms as Pike County Judge Executive. His last term ended in 2015 with a long list of his own accomplishments while in the office. Rutherford was also a driving force behind the creation of the coal severance tax that Patton fought to bring back to the mountains. Defeating Rutherford was a tall order. I ran against Wayne, spent a lot of money, and won. Uh, he ran back against me at 85, and uh, I won, but I didn't win by as near a big margin. You know, I've run on my record, and I've run on their record, and I'd a lot rather run on their record than my record. But we did win that race. Patton's time as judge executive is probably most remembered for his implementation of a mandatory garbage collection program. In prior years, people could dump at county sites at no cost, and there were four companies collecting for a very limited number of people. But the number of illegal dumps and the amount of trash in the creeks and streams 
was daunting. Well, I think if you ask anybody in Pike County, uh, what did I do as county judge? They'll say he started the garbage program countywide, mandatory. Everybody had to take garbage. That was a difficult thing to do. And it took about six months to get that approved. But uh, I think now most people realize it was the right, was something we had to do. And most people wanted the county cleaned up, but they were afraid that they would end up paying the bill. But then the people that was up further up the hollow than they were wouldn't pay, and, and that they'd still live with their garbage. The program was perceived as unpopular, but Patton commissioned an internal poll during his 1985 re-election campaign with unexpected results. Mandatory garbage collection was extremely popular, but Patton was not. He used that to his advantage, most notably in a series of commercials that were run just before election day. One of his first acts as judge was to reorganize the county road department. Well, I think we uh, brought a lot of professionalism into the county workforce. I think we built a professional road crew. It's amazing to think of how poor the road conditions were in Pike County at the time. State roads were paved, but many others were not. There was about 600 miles or 700 miles of county road. And I think when I came in office, they wanted more than 15 or 20 miles of them blacktopped. And by the time I left office, I think we had about half of them or more blacktopped. And now I think there, there's not very many roads that people, that a lot of people live on that's not, uh, that's not blacktopped. And that makes a lot of difference. A lot of his remaining energy as judge executive was spent in economic development. Uh, industrial park down at uh, Mossy Bottom and got uh, some businesses down there. We got the cookie factory over on uh, Johns Creek, uh, still there today. Losing the lieutenant governor's race in 1987 was a big setback on the path to being governor. At the time, that office was the single best way to set yourself up for a run for governor. Patton had spent a lot of money and came up short. I ran for lieutenant governor in 87 and lost. And people uh, started uh, saying, Paul, won't you run again? Well, you know, in politics, if two people urge you to run, that's a, a strong movement. And if three people ask you to run, that's a draft. And I got drafted and I probably had about three people tell me that uh, uh, maybe I would try again. And, and, I, and I, we decided we would. While Patton was serving as Lieutenant Governor, Governor Brereton Jones pushed through an amendment that would make the next governor, not Jones himself, eligible to serve two consecutive terms. Jones also appointed Patton to be Secretary of Economic Development, allowing Patton to spend a lot of his term traveling the state, getting to know key business leaders and their concerns. Patton narrowly won the 1995 governor's election and immediately set to work he knew that relationships with legislators were extremely important. He reportedly still has a reputation as one of the better governors in that regard. He used those relationships to push through some big ideas. His first budget focused on improving state efficiency and the equipment state workers had to work with. He soon established a reputation for political courage by going against some traditional Democratic constituencies and calling a special session to reform the state's workers' compensation system. Later, he came to believe that some of those changes had gone too far and signed legislation to try to correct these issues in 2002. Perhaps his greatest accomplishment, though, came in education with some calling him the education governor. Well, when it comes to the state of Kentucky, I realized that education was the key. I ran into an awful lot of really, really smart, capable people that weren't realizing their maximum potential because they didn't have a after high school education. For K through 12 education, Patton pushed through some revisions to the 1990 Kentucky Education Reform Act. On his watch, Kentucky became the first state to have internet in every classroom. He didn't forget adults either. 
establishing programs to help those without a high school diploma get their GED. Uh, in 1990, the state uh, made a major commitment to our elementary and secondary schools, which we have to have. That's the foundation of education, is your grade schools and your high schools. But in the day, you can't live in the foundation. You've got to have a house. And higher education, post-secondary, not necessarily four years after high school, to give yourself a unique skill is uh, the house that you've got to build for your future. He signed the Kentucky Post-Secondary Education Act in 1997. The following year, the Kentucky Educational Excellence Scholarship was established so that any high school student with a 2.5 or above grade point average could receive some amount of help with college. The most important thing I did as governor was to vote eight years to improve the post-secondary after high school education in Kentucky, and it's dramatically improved. Another statewide accomplishment was to reform the juvenile justice system. Kentucky had one of the worst systems when Patton came into office, as demonstrated by being one of only two states not to qualify for federal juvenile justice grants. By 2001, following the passage of reforms, Attorney General Janet Reno said Kentucky's juvenile justice system was a model for the nation. Patton was unopposed in the primary in 1999 and won in a landslide with over 60% of the vote in the fall. The governor's heart was always in Pike County, and he has said that he had a list of things he wanted to accomplish for Eastern Kentucky when he took office. First on that list was transportation. In office, 119 was about half finished from here to Williamson, and uh, I was planned on serving eight years. And the first thing I did was I said, I want 119 finished so I cut the ribbon before I leave office. That's an order. The second thing I told them was, I want 460 to Virginia so far along that they have to finish it. I knew I couldn't get it done because at that time, the only thing they had done was establish a route. And so we started designing it and uh, we had it about half finished. And when I left office, we were spending about $40 million a year on it. And at that rate, they said it would be finished in about 10 years. Well, we're about 16 years and they still got about five years to go, but we will get it. And that's gonna make Pikeville as accessible uh, as any place in the world with all of the four lane roads coming in and out of, out of uh, Pikeville. We're not isolated anymore. From his time as judge executive, he also knew that what was good for Pike County was good for Pikeville and vice versa. You know, as, as county judge, um, I realized that Pikeville was a part of the county and we need to work with Pikeville. And then when I became governor, we, uh, I wanted to get rid of all those power poles that were downtown Pikeville. And set, on 2nd Street, you wouldn't believe. And Kentucky Avenue here, coming into the college, uh, it was bad. It was, it was the sewer of Pikeville. And we spent about, oh, about $14 million dollars rebuilding the road and taking down all the old houses and building back some mixed, mixed housing. We got the Expo Center. We rebuilt all the sewer system in downtown Pikeville. Uh, we had a grant program. If you wanted to improve your facade on your store downtown, we'd pay half the cost out of the state. I spent about $120 million uh, in Pikeville uh, during those uh, eight years that I uh, served as governor. And I think that's a lot of the stuff that, uh, that's made Pikeville what it, what it is. So I, we wanted to come back and I, I wanted it to be a nice place to come back to. And it's, it's, it's a jewel. We won't go into the contributions Governor Patton has made to the University of Pikeville today. We'll save that for another time. But we will note that he's still looking toward the future. And I think, I think we've got a possibility. Uh, we got, we got uh, the, the, the city's built a good industrial park here. County's working on some industrial projects. We have to get a diversified industry. Coal's not gonna come back. On July 25th, 2016, a statue of Governor Patton was unveiled at the bottom of the University of Pikeville's 99 steps in a ceremony honoring him for his many accomplishments. 
it was attended by local, state, and national leaders. We'd like to say thank you, Governor, for giving your time for the Pike TV interview, but more importantly, for all you've done for Pike County and Kentucky. I think that's five minutes. <laughs> thank you for watching Pikeville History Moments. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit like and subscribe or click on the link to our website at visitpikeville.com. If you're in downtown Pikeville, stop by and see Governor Patton's statue located at the bottom of the 99 steps at the University of Pikeville.